Um, so I'd like to begin maybe by, uh, by thanking uh, Yigid, the rest of the Zio team, Zainab, everyone. First of all, for the, for the very, very warm welcome. I see uh, them all in the corner. Um, thanks for the very warm, warm welcome. It's always a pleasure to be in Istanbul. Um, and yeah, this trip is, is really special and I hope to, uh, you know, to, to continue this in, in the future. Um, for those of you who aren't aware, can I maybe start off with maybe a, um, a show of hands? Who's heard of Deep Crawl before? Anyone's heard of Deep Crawl? Okay, great. Be other than <laughs> through Yigit's presentation, I heard Deep Crawl several times there. Um, okay, so there's a few familiar people of Deep Crawl. Who's heard of Screaming Frog, maybe? Yeah, okay, relatively similar. So what I'll do today, so let me introduce myself. Sorry, as Yigit did, um, I, my name is Nabil Daba. I'm from uh, Deep Crawl, the customer success team. My job is really to make sure that, um, essentially, if you guys use Deep Crawl, that you know how to use it well and that um, we don't leave you, you know, with, with a tool and, and no, absolutely no knowledge. So my role is really to, to help enable you to, to use Deep Crawl properly. So what I'd like to cover today is um, foundations, maintaining solid foundations of SEO. And to begin with, I'd like to introduce you to what I call Maslow's hierarchy of SEO. And so th this is really probably the best way to visualize what SEO is and how you have to deal with priorities. And I know that there's a lot of SEOs in this room and I'm, and, and I'm very conscious of that, so I'd be very curious to hear what you think about this. But if you think of SEO this way, you have the bottom here, the, what I call the foundations, and this is what Deep Crawl focuses on, really. Making sure that you have accessible content, making sure that your content is of high quality. And so this is really what I want to make sure that we cover today. Um, and you know, having said that, we, so while we do focus on this area, there's also going to be a few areas that I'll, I'll make sure to, to reference during this presentation. And again, if you have any questions, please, please do keep them uh, for the end when we'll have the panel. And uh, you can also tweet your questions. I know there's a few people in London that'll probably um, you know, take care of answering them um, from, from the team. But if you do tweet them, make, so, make sure to use the digital zone hashtag so that you can, uh, you can win a few tickets to um, the digital zone event next week. So having said all this, what are the areas that I'll be covering today? I've broken this presentation into two parts and uh, Erdal and Nico are gonna go a bit more in depth into some of these parts. So I really wanna give everyone here who's not too familiar with SEO, sort of a, a good understanding of, of what some of these things are that they'll be speaking of in a bit more detail. The first thing we'll cover is crawl budget. We'll then move on to gap analysis, followed by link building, monitoring, uh, and then monitoring your sites as well. If you'll recall, a few of these, do, like for example, link building, apply to, apply to the rest of the pyramid as well. So let's begin with crawl budget. And more specifically, with an announcement that Google made about um, a few months ago. Erdal's gonna reference this as well. I was happy to see this in his slides. This was quite a big announcement when Google made this. And, and for those of you who don't know about Google's um, blog, I really recommend following it. Uh, Google Webmaster Central blog. This is where all they make all their official announcements. Most of you will know SEO, or at least Google tries to, make, to keep all the SEO secret really well, um, well kept so that, well, you know, it makes you fight harder to, to build better, uh, better content. Um, and then users have, have a better quality ex and better experience as well so while surfing the web. But then sometimes they make announcements, like they did this one on the 16th of January, 2017. So this is recent. And, many, and the reason it surprised many SEOs is because Google announced basically their resources are not limitless, right? They only have so much money, so much time on their hands to crawl your sites. And if I'm going too fast, please yell or like throw something at me because I, I realize that I'm speaking English and, and maybe not everyone speaks English. Um, so crawl budget, it's important to understand this because, well, Google doesn't have an unlimited amount of time and it will stop after a certain point. If it feels like it's wasting its time on your pages, then it will stop. So, you know, there's a few questions that we should be asking ourselves, you know, as we start tackling crawl budget. The first one I want to focus on is, am I using my crawl budget efficiently? Okay, is Google wasting its time on low-valued pages? How are we going to define low-valued pages? Um, um, how many pages do I have? Most webmasters today come to Deep Crawl actually to discover how many pages they have. Most people don't know. This is a, a big um, myth, you know, especially with parameters. You can have millions of pages without even knowing about it. 
Do I have any duplicate pages? Another area where, where you know, many people don't, don't have any idea about their duplicates. And are the right pages being indexed by Google? So let's begin by looking at this in particular. So this is a, a, a breakdown that DeepCrawl produces showing you crawl budget, or at least showing you which types of pages um, Google, sorry, uh, DeepCrawl found. And as a result, you can assume that Google found the same thing. DeepCrawl respects the robots.txt disallow rules. And as a result, you can expect this to be relatively, um, well, actually very accurate. <clears throat> so of my pages, of all the pa these pages I've found here, and this is a real crawl. This is not a client, otherwise they would be panicking at seeing this. But this is a real crawl. You can see that 53% of my pages here in this crawl were inefficient, were a waste of Google's time. 53% of the time was spent on duplicate pages, whereas only 47,000 pages, 34% of the pages found were primary pages. So let's define primary pages. Primary pages are 200 pages, right? The status code is 200. They're indexable. And they're either unique, and if they're not unique, then they're the primary duplicate. So if they have another duplicate out there, DeepCrawl actually tells you, well, yes, there is another duplicate out there, but we've actually found that this one is the most important duplicate based on the internal linking of that page. We can actually de determine um, how important it is. And then what you can do is you can easily add a canonical tag to, to that page, and, um, and all of a sudden you're reducing your, your duplicate pages, you're making your crawl more efficient. So another way to look at crawl budget is through the web crawl depth, right? So understanding how many clicks it required for Google, assuming that Google may, does most of its crawling you know, naturally from, from your home page, let's make this assumption, how many clicks did it take for Google to reach some of your pages. And you can see here, and I don't think you need to be an expert to understand that there is a certain inefficiency over here, right? Obviously level one is going to be your home page or the start URL that you, you assigned in the, in the settings. Level two will be anything that was uh, linked in level one, and so on and so forth. And you can see that it really requires six levels, so five clicks in to be able to find, A, most of the unique pages, but also a lot of the duplicate pages. So, this also tells us, you know, well, maybe most of my pages were actually, most of the, the pages that Google crawled were actually duplicates, and Google's going to give up over here. It's noticing that, actually, there's a lot of inefficiency here, so it's going to give up, and it's going to maybe stop looking and finding all of these pages over here. So I won't go into too much depth into this. I know uh, Airedale's covering, basically, co um, the, the more in-depth part of crawl budget. Uh, optimization, and I'll let him do some um, some of the more detail, uh, discuss more of the details here. Now I want to move on now to gap analysis, and I hope yeah I'm doing okay with time. Gap analysis is really the understanding of what pages were found where, and we again let's start off with a few questions that we should be asking ourselves. How are my pages being found? Um, am I linking to all my pages internally, right? Are my pages just out there somewhere and it's impossible for, for, for them to be found organically from one click to another? Think back to the, to the, the, um, the crawl depth, the, the web crawl depth that we were looking at before. Are my pages with external backlinks broken, right? And I'll, I'll go into a bit more depth as to what I mean here, but there are other great tools out there, such as Majestic and Ahref, that will tell you what your backlinks are. How many pages are pointing back to you? And are these pages broken? Maybe, they, maybe this was a promotion from you know, years ago that you've forgotten about, and now actually it's a broken URL. But guess what? That promotion was really successful on blogs or, or on, on, you know, news, um, on other um, types of uh, pages, and they're still driving a lot of traffic to your page, but that's a broken page now. So it's interesting to, to look at that. Are my page, pages with organic traffic broken? That's another question you can ask yourself. We have an integration, and Nico will explain a bit more about how we, how we were able to provide this information for you. And then, are the right pages indexable? So what is it that covers this gap, right? Where do we look at? We try, what, well, what do we look at? We try to, to really get a, a, as good of an understanding as we possibly can from, uh, from your website, and that begins with, with, with the site itself, right? Think back to the, to the web crawl depth. We start with the home page, and then we click on everything we can find there, click on everything we can find there, and so on and so forth. So that's, that's, one, that's our first crawl. Then, if you've integrated your XML sitemaps, we'll look at that too. We'll crawl your sitemaps. We'll look for, for the pages that we found there, because at the end of the day, your XML sitemap are the pages that you're telling Google are your most important. Make sure that they're not indexable, for example, that you're not sharing any non-indexable pages over there. 
we'll look at search engine data. So, and again, Nico will go into a bit more depth as to what we mean here, but um, we've got two integrations, one with Google Analytics and one with Google Search Console to pull in data uh, from, from, these, from these two terrific platforms that are free and give you an understanding as what, what, it, what is the traffic that you're getting so to your organic pages, right? Organically, you're not paying a dime for, these, for this traffic, so you wanna make sure that it's, it's, um, it's not being wasted on, on poor pages or, or poorly optimized pages. And then backlinks, as I mentioned before, data from Majestic or Ahref, or even the, the sample data from Search Console can be quite useful here to get an understanding for, um, as to what exactly are your pages that have backlinks. And then finally, this is our latest integration over here, server logs. So understanding which pages are getting traffic, actual traffic from Googlebot itself. Not from customers, from users of Google, but from actual search engines. What pages are, are search engines looking at and how frequently are they looking at these pages? This is, this is gonna be very interesting. So certain things that we can ask ourselves. Now you're looking at the same, same crawl as we were looking at before. The, the gap analysis, basically an understanding of which pages were found where. So I'll try to break this down um, a little bit. What you can see here is 136,000 pages were, um, were, were found on the website itself. Of these 136, only nine were found in the sitemap. Maybe this is a very outdated sitemap. Maybe you have broken sitemaps. But for whatever reason, we found only nine pages in here. Then, and obviously 136,000, 125 were not, so the, the light blue are pages not in that source. Then we found 39,000 pages in Google Analytics. These are pages that are driving organic traffic to your site, whether it be from Google, from Bing, from Baidu, from, what, from Yandex, from whatever, um, from whatever uh, search engine. And what what will be interesting is to understand what you know what pages what what pages aren't driving organic traffic. You can actually click on this report to understand you know what these pages are. Are they all indexable? Maybe they're poorly configured. Maybe some of them are thin pages that Google decided to to drop its index. So look at the ratio maybe with content as well. And this is where you can really dig into into some of the details. And I again we'll uh, we'll cover some of this later on in this presentation. But understanding what it, why is why is it that Google isn't indexing these pages. Backlinks, again, some of these pages that have backlinks, only 430 over here. Make sure you have a, a good sample or at least a good range of data. And then finally, in this last source, your logs. So only 18,000 of the original 136,000 were driving traffic from Googlebot itself. So some of the, the key takeaways we have over here. There are no orphan pages, that's a great sign. So everything, you can see pages not in web crawl, there were none. Right? Everything was found in the web crawl from every other source. And I'll show you an example where that's not the case later. There are nine URLs in the sitemap that's very low. 83% of your, product, uh, of your um, primary pages are driving organic traffic. And then only 1% of, uh, of your pages have backlinks to them. And then there's very, very low Googlebot traffic. So this is, this is the opposite example where you have, you can see, so we've got this crawl of the website ran 61,000 pages, but there were 833 that were not in the web crawl, right? These are backlink pages. So let's take a look at this. This is where we can, we're able to show you your, um, your orphan pages. So orphan pages are pages that don't have any internal links, right? That aren't linked internally within them. So it's interesting to, to take a look. Why is it? Again, maybe these are, are old pages that you've chosen to, to ignore. Maybe you didn't even know. Maybe you inherited this site and you didn't know that you had these pages. So take advantage. Take advantage of them because they're still throwing authority towards you out there, right? They're still uh, generating links. So take advantage of them. So how can you generate a good understanding of that gap analysis? As I mentioned before, Ahrefs, Majestic, Search Console data, Pull that in to deep crawl. Again, Nico will show you how to do that. And then, you know, what will generate our pages are on pages that, uh, that have broken backlinks, disallowed URLs with backlinks. You know, maybe you changed your robots.txt uh, file and you didn't realize that, uh, you had, um, that, that you had backlinks to these pages. Redirecting URLs with backlinks. Again, maybe poor, uh, an inefficient use of crawl budget. What else do we have? Uh, Non-indexable pages uh, or with, with backlinks. Again, Make sure that these really are meant to be non-indexable. Um, otherwise, you're, you're sending a, a whole lot of authority towards these pages and then not doing anything with that. 
pages with backlinks but zero links or maybe a nofollow uh, tag on, uh, in the header. Again, authority is being sent to these pages and you wouldn't know about this if you didn't crawl them. Now, the, um, this, the other part I want to talk about, the third, the third pillar um, about, the about building solid foundations is, is link building. And, and link building, again, if you think of the pyramid, it's a little higher up. But because deep crawl actually runs an analysis of your crawl, we're able to give you some insight as to what links, um, what, what pages are generating links. And the reason I was asking you earlier about whether or not you were familiar with Screaming Frog is that a lot of people often compare us to Screaming Frog. And that's absolutely fine. Um, in fact, we, we still use Screaming Frog internally as well. If we want to run a quick crawl, if we want to run a, sh a short crawl, um, so there's absolutely no shame in using Screaming Frog. I'd say that, and this is not a scientific research or anything, but I'd say roughly 90% of our customers still use Screaming Frog. It's a great complementary tool. And what Screaming Frog won't do is it won't give you that analysis. You have to run that analysis yourself. What we'll actually do is we'll, since we run an analysis on the cloud, we're cloud-based, we can do all this and really not you know, do this in the background while you're sleeping or eating or repeating. <laughs> So the first thing I want to talk about is, is the fact that, well, one page is not a link. A page does not equal a link. Think of a page, it's a URL. Now how often that URL is found spread across your, uh, your site are how many links you have. Just want to clarify that. So again, let's go back to, to some of the questions we want to be asking ourselves. Are we diluting our link authority, right? Are we sending authority internally to to low-valued pages, and I'll show you how you can do that in a second. Um, do, your use, so do you use your anchor text, um, so your most popular anchor text, do they match your keyword? You've, you've probably done keyword research. If, if you've been in SEO for a while, you've, you've all done keyword research. So make sure that your anchor text actually match the, the, the, um, the uh, sorry, make sure that the keywords that you're using and, and you've researched and found to be very valuable are spread across your anchor text. Um, how many broken links do I have versus broken pages? I might have one broken URL, but if that URL is found on my header or my footer, that can be millions of broken links. So that's really poor, poor user experience and obviously poor bot experience as well. And have you built, uh, have you built uh, landing pages that, that are you know, really generating good conversion and then throw all, that, all, of that, um, all of the authority that you have towards these landing pages? And I'll show you, show you how to do that in just a second. And then finally, how many external links are you hosting? How much authority are you actually spreading out of your site? That's important to bear in mind because you're not only sending your customers or your users out of your site, but you're also sending bots out as well. So take a look at this. Um, we've got a crawl over here, again, of this uh, mysterious non-client that we were looking at before. And this is, this is basically the, the Excel spreadsheet that we were able to generate. You can always export this data from, the, from deep crawl. If you prefer working on it um, in Excel, you're more than welcome to. Now, we, we're, we're cloud-based, so you can run an all, a lot of this manipulation and analysis on deep crawl. But if you want to export that to then upload it somewhere else, you can. Now, one of the things I want to look at over here are um, these, these, three, these three columns over, uh, over here. The first one are anchor text. The, the next one is the hyperlink, so the URL too, and then the frequency. How often was that relationship found? This is going, th and this is really where the gold is, right? This is where it's interesting, because again, if you were using Screaming Frog, you couldn't do this manipulation on your computer. It's just impossible. It's, well, it depends how big your site is, but most likely if you have over a, a few thousand pages, that's not going to be, that's not going to lead to, to anywhere. So, anchor text. How often was, in this case, blog found linked to blog.swiss.com? And you can see that it was roughly 119,000 times. Now, the reason this is interesting and important, even if you might tell me, well, blog, this is, well, this is blog. I don't really care about ranking well for blog. But you are. You're competing, obviously, with other blogs that are, that are ranking very well. But this is where you are sending most of your authority. So through this anchor text, this keyword, without realizing it, to this, uh, to this uh, hyperlink. And obviously this is an airline, Swiss.com is an airline, so it might, it might make more sense to focus on other keywords, right, that you didn't know you were uh, doing so poorly at. So we can see aircraft, for example. Aircraft, so it's, there's 229 links or, uh, pointing to this, to this page. That's, that's quite a lot, you don't, depends how big the crawl is, that's important to bear in mind. But really this analysis will be important. You might be surprised, you might think that the word, a word that you were actually um, 
you, you were linking quite well to, that you had a lot of anchor text pointing towards, well, it turns out that maybe actually you weren't actually sending that much authority towards it. Quite, you know, reversely, you might realize that you're actually sending too much authority to a specific page or using a specific anchor text. And what you might want to do is diversify it a little bit to make sure that Google doesn't think it's suspicious. Let's take, for example, you've got a crawl of one million pages, right? One million pages, but let's say you've got, well, 20 million links to pointing to one page. Google's going to find that a little suspicious. It's like you're trying to rank really well for that specific keyword. Try to, try to mix it up. Try to uh, diversify it a little bit. And this is, a, this is how I want to show you in an example. Basically, what we have, you can notice each. Uh, so this is a link. Imagine it's a link, your typical underlined blue link. So flights to Istanbul is being pointed at to different URLs, right? The same, the same anchor text is being pointed to different pages. And you can see that each page has a different deep rank. Deep rank is, is our value for page authority. It's how important that page is internally. And it's on a scale of 0 to 10. Obviously, um, if, if you have a higher deep rank, that means you've got a lot more pages pointing uh, towards it and less pointing out. And this is all based on, on the, the original page rank, the one that you know, most of you must have heard of. So what's interesting here is as soon as you, you shift this around, as soon as you stop diluting all of that authority, and you just point it to one, and then canonicalize or point all the other links to that main URL, then all of a sudden that deep rank goes up to 8.9. So if we were at 7.6 6 earlier, right, then all of a sudden, yes, we're diluting, we're reducing these pages a little bit, but at least you're increasing it. And you're able to actually get that data from this report, the unique internal links report that I was just outlining earlier. So that brings us to our final pillar, our final, um, well, pillar to, to building foundation, um, solid foundations, and that's monitoring. Now, a lot of you um, might, might be consultants or you might be working on, on a single audit and fixing, maybe running a quick fix to, to a website. And, and you, might, you might tell me, well, actually, you know, my client just hired me for, for this one job. I don't really see the, the, the, um, the benefit of, of monitoring my site and running it and crawling it on a regular basis. Well, this is, this is probably the, the main benefit over here. Even if you, dro you drop your client, let's say, for example, your client's no longer with you, you still want to, get, to keep crawling it maybe on a, on a semi-regular basis, maybe every now and then, just to make sure that the fixes that you put up are still, well, fixed and they're not broken all of a sudden. You can see this site over here, all of a sudden, there's a, a huge increase in the number of duplicate pages. And your client might not be aware of it, right? They hired you just for this one job. And you can tell them, well, you can share this with them, tell them, well, actually, I, you know, I've been monitoring and, and keeping an eye on your site, and I noticed there's been a huge rise in duplicate pages, and it might be negatively affecting your, your, uh, your crawl budget. In that case, they'll most likely hire you again, you'll keep that job forever, and um, you'll live happily ever after. But, this is, this is really one of the, the main benefits to, to running that crawl. And bear in mind, again, when most of these aspects that I showed you over here, for those of you who are consultants, this is a great um, tool to, to be able to, to show to, to prospecting clients. And I know uh, all of the agencies do that. Obviously, monitoring your broken pages. This is just a quick screenshot showing you what, what, it, looks, uh, what it looks like on deep crawl. More specifically, what's been changed. This is going to be really uh, beneficial to you. Understanding how many pages have been added since the last time you ran the crawl, right? So how many new broken pages we found versus how many you fixed. And this will be highlighted over there. So that's, that's me. If, you know, ask yourself that now. What are your foundations like? Run a quick crawl. We've, we've, um, we've given you um, a free trial for, for those of you who are interested in, in finding out. And um, we'll, we'll have some, uh, some time for questions afterwards. But now I'll, I'll pass it over to Erdal. Tekrardan merhabalar. İsmim Erdal. SEO'da iki seneye yakın bir süredir SEO danışmanı olarak çalışıyorum. E, Nabil aslında güzel, benim için güzel bir temel oluşturdu. E, crawl bütçesinin optimizasyonu hakkında deep crawl'dan da neler yapabiliriz onlardan bahsedeceğim. E, crawl bütçesi önemli bir konu. Birazdan tanımını da vereceğim. Neredeyse teknik SEO'da yaptığımız her şey crawl bütçesine dokunuyor ve e, SEO ilgilendiren diğer, diğer her şeyi bir kenara bıraktığımızda sadece crawl bütçesinin optimizasyonuyla e, önemli başarılar elde edebiliyoruz. 
Dediğim gibi e, bu arada sunumum İngilizce ama ben Türkçe konuşacağım. Zaten başladım. E, şöyle tadımla başlayacağım. E, Nobel'in söylediği gibi sene başında Google bir açıklama yaptı. Crowbucus'un nasıl algıladıklarına dair. E, algıladıkları dedim çünkü kendilerinin içerisinde böyle bir terimin olmadığını söylüyorlar. E, ama sonunda bir şekilde Crowbucus'u ifadesini bu yazıda kullanıyor olduklarını göreceğiz birazdan. E, aslında iki, onun için biz... Dışarıda SEO'lar, SEO sektöründeki profesyonellerin Crowbucus olarak adlandırdığı şey Google'da aslında iki ayaklı bir süreçten oluşuyor. Burada bir ilk önce bir crawl rate isminde bir konseptimiz var. Daha sonra da crawl demand konseptimiz var. Crawl rate'e baktığımızda aslında şunu görüyoruz. Bunu tarama sıklığı şeklinde Türkçeleştirebiliriz. Google botun, Google örümceklerinin, Google tarayıcılarının web sayfalarımıza yaptığı paralel isteklerin sayısı... Ee, bunu belirleyen aslında, e, birazdan bakacağız ona, e, sitemizin, e, sunucularımızın aslında Google'dan gelen isteklere ne kadar hızlı yanıt verebildiği ve altından ne kadar kalkabildiği ile alakalı. Dolayısıyla ne kadar güçlü sunucularımız olursa, e, Google botun isteklerini ne kadar iyi karşılayabilirsek, o bizden daha fazla sayfa talep etmeye başlayacak. E, bu aslında bizim yönetebileceğimiz alan burası ama ben crawl demand'i de söyleyeceğim sizin için. E, burada da aslında, e, bunu çok Türk te- Türkçeleştirmek biraz zor benim için ama... Google'a sunacağımız, neden bizi taraması gerektiğine dair sunacağımız bahaneler aslında bunlar. Şöyle bir baktığımızda sebepler, crawl sıklığı için şöyle bir durum var. Az önce söyledim zaten, crawl health. Yani biz ne kadar 200 yanıtı dönebiliyoruz Google isteklerine. Sunucumuz yavaşlıyor mu? Cevap sürelerimiz uzuyor mu? Bunlara dikkat ediyor Google. Eğer bu açıdan bir problemimiz yoksa, ee, tarama sıklığımız, şöyle geçeyim ben, ee, tarama sıklığı bizim için Google tarafında artacaktır. Ee, bir de bunu yönetebileceğimiz Search Console'da e, bir limit ayarı var. İsterse Google'a e, hangi sıklıkta sayfalarımızı tarayabileceğini söyleyebiliyoruz. Arttırma imkanımız yok. Sadece limitleyebiliyoruz. Ee, crawl Demand tarafında ise şöyle bir durum var. Popülerite, tabii ki bunu SEO sektöründe çoğu zaman domain otoritesi olarak duyuyoruz. Ne kadar popüler, webde konuşulan bir domainimiz varsa bunun sonucunda Google bizim sayfalarımızı daha fazla taramak ve daha fazla indekslemek isteyecek. Bu kısa vadeli yönetebileceğimiz bir şey değil. Daha uzun vadeli SEO çalışmalarının sonucunda gelebilecek bir çıktı. İkinci nokta staleness. Bunu atıl, atıl kalmamak şeklinde Türkçeleştirebiliriz. Ee, çok sık güncellenen sayfalarımız varsa Google oradaki içeriği e, arama sonuçlarında da göstermek isteyecektir. Dolayısıyla kendi indeksinde yer alan sayfaların e, güncel içerikleri barındırdığından emin olduğu, emin olmak istiyor Google. Ve e, crawl demand'i belirliyorken dikkat ettiği noktalardan birisi bu. Bir de e, çok sık olmayan site-wide events diye bir e, faktör var. Crawl demand'i etkileyen buna örnek e, site taşıma işlemleri. E, örneğin HTTPS'e geçiş. Bu da aslında staleness dediği noktaya çıkan bir durum. Eğer biz e, HTTP sayfalarımızın tamamını HTTPS'e taşırsak Google arama sonuçlarında tabii ki HTTP sayfaları değil, HTTPS URL'leri göstermek isteyecek. Dolayısıyla böyle bir durumu fark ettiği anda e, crawl isteğini çok e, arttırmaya başlıyor. Crawl demand'i çok arttırıyor. E, bunu da zaten Search Console'u takip ederseniz görebiliyorsunuz bu tarz durumlarda. Bir şey bakın. Sonuçta e, crawl budget e, ifadesini kullanmadıklarınız e, söylemiş, söylüyorlardı yazının başında. Ama en sonunda böyle e, bir tanım veriyorlar. Yani Google Bot'un tarayabileceği ve taramak isteyeceği sayfa sayısı şeklinde e, orada bir e, crawl, budget, crawl bütçesi e, tanımı var. Peki SEO'lar için bu neden önemli? E, yapmamız gereken şey şu, Google Bot'u bize organik kanalda e, trafik üretebilecek, kaliteli trafik üretebilecek ve bizim e, nitelikli içerik sunduğumuz sunduğumuz sayfalarda dolaştırmamız gerekiyor. E, indeks indekse, indeks indeksletmediğimiz ya da e, zayıf içeriğe sahip ya da çift içerik oluşturan sayfalarda Google Google Bot'a vakit kaybettirmememiz lazım ki e, kıymetli içeriğimiz indekslenebilsin. Bunu yapabilmek için e, crawl bütçesini neyin etkilediğini bilmemiz gerekiyor. E, az önce söylediklerim birazcık işin sonucu gibiydi. E, ama burada biraz daha e, yazının devamında crawl bütçesinin nelerin etkilediğini bize söylüyor Google. E, aslında baktığımızda genel olarak e, bu maddeler çoğu zaman e, sayfalarımızın ne kadar kaliteli içeriği, içerik sunduğuyla alakalı. E, burada Facebook Navigation var. Çoğu zaman e-ticaret sitelerinde solda bir e, filtreleme alanı görürüz. O alanda oluşturulan URL'ler çoğu zaman e, 
yeterince özgün içerik sunmayabiliyor. Bu ürün sayısına ya da filtreye çeşidine göre değişebilen bir şey. Ama Google'un bizi burada dikkat, et, dikkat çekmek istediği nokta e, bu yörelerin orijinal içerik sunup sunmadığı noktası. Bundan bizim emin olmamızı bekliyor. Yine aynı şekilde on-site duplicate content kısmı var. E, soft error pages var. Bunlar soft 404 dediğimiz sayfa tipleri. Hacked pages bunlar, bunları hızlı geçeceğim. Genelde bu faktörler e, site çapında bizim e, crawl bütçemizi belirleyen noktalar. E, benim kendi görüşlerim, bizim görüşümüz. Onu kattığımızda aslında sayfa seviyesinde yapabileceğimiz optimizasyonlar adına crawl bütçesi tarafında daha fazlası var. Bu, bu da e, şu, bu şekilde özetleyebilirim. E, site içi link kurgusu çok önemli. Yani e, deep crawl'da deep rank olarak gördüğümüz o skor. Aslında bir sayfaya ne kadar site içindeki diğer sayfalarımızdan ne kadar fazla sayıda ve ne kadar kaliteli link ürettiğimizle alakalı bir durum. Biz eğer bir sayfanın e, site içindeki link, e, site içi link ağındaki de değerini yukarıya taşıyabilirsek, e, hiyerarşide daha yukarıya taşıyabilirsek, Google Bot'un da e, o sayfaları daha sık taramak isteyeceğini göreceğiz. E, bunu da doğrulamanın bir yolu var e, sunucu kayıtlarıyla. Deep Crawl'da da böyle bir entegrasyon var, ondan da bahsedeceğim. Site hiyerarşisi ve, hiyerarşisi ve internal page rank aslında buna çıkıyor. Page rank tabii ki Google'ın dahili olarak hesapladığı bir rakam, e, bir skor. Algoritması açık olarak hepimizin ulaşabileceği bir algoritma ama Deep, deep Crawl, Deep Rank skoru ile bizim için bunu hesaplıyor. Yaklaşık e, Google'unkine benzer bir skor alabiliyoruz. Tabii ki HTTP yanıt kodları var. E, mümkünse Google botu 200 yanıtı döndüren yörelerimizde dolaştırmalıyız. E, 300'ler, 400'ler ve 500 yanıt kodlu sayfalarda dolaştırmamalıyız. Yine yazıda buradaki son madde site hızının e, Google botun crawl rate'ini e, arama sıklığını düzenliyorken baktığı noktalardan birisi oldu. E, dolayısıyla site hızı da bizim için crawl bütçesinin optimizasyon adına önemli bir nokta. Şimdi ben de deep crawl'dan da anlatacağımı söylemiştim. Şöyle hızlıca bir e, hepsine tek tek üzerinden geçebiliriz. Deep crawl bize crawl bütçesinin optimizasyonu adına nasıl yardım edebilir sorusuna cevap veriyorken. Click linkler yani e, 400'ler, 400 hataları, e, hata sayfaları 500'ler olabilir ya da bir şekilde başarılı bir HTTP yanıtı dönmeyen sayfalar olabilir. Bunları deep crawl'a çok rahat tespit edebiliyoruz. İkinci sırada Google'ın en fazla ön planı çıkardığı nokta çift içerik ve kaliteli olmayan içeriğe sahip sayfalar. Bunları çok rahat deep crawl'da tespit edebiliyoruz. Üçüncü nokta yönlendirmeler. Az önce de söyledim HTTP yanıt kodları çok önemli. Yönlendirmeler bilmeyenler için söyleyeyim. Bir sayfanın farklı bir sayfaya, farklı bir adrese taşındığını söylediği durumda oluşturulan yanıt kodları. Bu da ekstra araya fazladan HTTP istekleri yapılması sonucunu doğuruyor. Bu da tabii ki bizim Googlebot'un bize ayıracağı zamanı, süreyi ve o talep sıklığını birazcık Kötü yönde kullanacağımız anlamına geliyor. Dolayısıyla e, yönlendirmeleri tespit edip bunları kaldırmalıyız. Birazdan detayına gireceğim. E, dördüncü noktada site haritaları var. Tıpkı site içi linkler gibi site haritasında hangi bağlantılarımıza yer verdiğimiz önemli. E, site haritalarında yalnızca indekste tutmak istediğimiz sayfalar olmalı. Birinci sayfalarımız olmalı. E, 200 yanıtı veren sayfalara yer vermeliyiz. Deep Crawl'un e, sadece site haritası için özel bir raporu var. Site haritaları için özel bir raporu var. Ve burada bu, bu tarz problemlerin tamamını çözebiliyoruz. Nabil'in de söylediği gibi yeni bir özellik e, sonucu kayıtlarını yeni bir crawl başlatmadan önce upload edebiliyoruz tuğla. O bizim için e, crawl e, analizine e, sonucu kayıtlarımızdaki Googlebot aktivitesine de dahil edebiliyor. Dolayısıyla biz aslında e, teoride crawl bütçesini konuşuyorken bir yandan da e, gerçekten Googlebot'un sitemizde ne yaptığını görebiliyor oluyoruz Deep Crawl'da. E, bir sonraki nokta Search Console e, bağlantısı. E, Google Analytics de bir seçenek. Organik datanızı Deep Crawl'da görebilmek için ama e, Search Console'un Google Analytics'ten farkı e, Google'daki sonuç sayfalı, arama motoru sonuç sayfalarının ee, bir sayfa için ne kadar kıymetli olup olmadığını ölçebilmemiz. Yani burada şunu demeye çalışıyorum. Ee, bir sayfa gerçekten ne kadar gösterim üretiyor? Ee, hangi pozisyonda, hangi kelimelerde, hangi pozisyonda? Ee, ve ben bu iki noktaya bakarak bir sayfada potansiyel bulabilir miyim herhangi bir sayfamda? Ve eğer bir potansiyel varsa ve potansiyelin altında seyreden bir e, SEO performansı varsa bu sayfayı crawl bütçesi optimizasyonu perspektifinden nasıl e, daha yukarılara taşıyabilirim? daha fazla trafik ürettirebilirim. 
e, bu, bu analizi yapmamıza imkan sağlıyor. Bu nokta ve tabii ki e, PaySpeed dediğimiz gibi e, site sayfa hızı düşük yörelerimizi deep crawl'da tespit edebiliyoruz. Şimdi buradan sonra göstereceklerim aslında deep crawl'un raporu bir tane breadcrumb da ekledim. E, deep crawl'da hangi başlık, hangi raporun altında e, hangi başlıkları bulabiliriz? Bunu görme imkanımız var. İlk önce e, click linklerle başlayacağım. Bu 400 hataları e, raporu. Şimdi şurada siz görebiliyor musunuz bilmiyorum ama şu da bizim bu Zorg'dan bu arada. E, Yiğit bilmiyordu galiba bunu. Ama bizde de bayağı teknik hatalar varmış. E, şöyle. <gülüyor> evet. Burada şöyle bir gör şöyle bir bu zaten Deep Crawl'un e, klasik ekranı, rapor ekranı. Şurada her bu bölümde her bir URL için e, detaylı bilgiler var. O raporun altında e, incelenen noktalarla alakalı tabii ki. Şimdi biz bu URL'i şu URL e, deep crawl tarayıcısına 404 yanıtı dönmüş. E, ancak şuraya baktığımızda bu founded URL ya da founded sitemap diye e, noktalarında şey yok, e, bir URL yok. Yani bu şu demek, site içerisinde herhangi bir noktadan linklememişiz site ya da site haritalarımızda bu bağlantıya yer vermemişiz. Bu anlamda doğru bir iş yapmışız. Peki deep crawl bunu nereden buldu? Bir sonraki e, ekranda görüyoruz bunu. Ben o sayfanın özel raporuna girdiğimde şurada bir işaret var. E, crawl'u başlatmadan önce yalnızca Google Bot'un son bir hafta içerisindeki Z.org'daki e, davranışlarını, etkinliğini içeren e, log dosyasını upload etmiştim. Bu da şu demek oluyor. Biz bir işi doğru yapmışız. Site, site içerisinde 404 e, ya da site haritalarında 404 yanıtı veren bir sayfamız yok ama Google Bot hala bu sayfayı tarıyor. Belki buna yönelik bir aksiyon alabiliriz. Belki bu sayfayı yönlendirmek isteyebiliriz. E, daha uygun bir ya da içerik anlamında e, yakın bir sayfamız varsa yönlendirebiliriz. Bu bir seçenek. E, dolayısıyla biz e, o log dosyası entegrasyonuyla birlikte gerçekten şurada... E, Kıymetli site içerisinde ulaşamayacağımız bir hataya belki hata diyebiliriz buna. Bir hataya ulaşma şansımız oluyor burada. İkinci kısım hata sayfaları 500 yanıtları. Bu durum, bu raporun şöyle bir kıymeti var bence. Çoğu zaman deep crawl'da yaptığınız crawl'larda eğer crawl saniyede taradığınız sayfa sesi 7-8 ise çoğu, çoğu, Türkiye'deki çoğu web sitesi pek çok sayfaya 500 yanıtı dönmeye başlıyor. Bu as, siz daha sonra raporda 500 yanıtı döndüğünü gördüğünüz yörelleri manuel olarak ulaştığınızda çoğu zaman 200 yanıt alıyorsunuz. Yanıt alıyorsunuz. Bunun da şöyle bir anlamı var. E, crawl isteği yani e, paralel olarak yollanan e, istekler, istek sıklığı arttığında sizin sunucunuz bir artık performanstan düşmeye başlıyor demek. Bu Google Bot'un da başına geliyor olabilir. E, bunu doğrulamanın e, aslında sunucu kayıtlarınıza doğrudan baktığınızda bunu çok rahat doğrulayabilirsiniz ama çoğu e, non-technical marketer için yani çok teknik tarafla ilişkisi olmayan pazarlamacılar için bu log dosyalarıyla uğraşmak biraz zor oluyor. Ama neyse ki e, Deep Crawl'da bu imkanı alabiliyoruz ve bu yanıtları görebiliyoruz. E, buradaki noktayı böyle özetleyebilirim. Örneğin Failed URLs raporumuz var. Burada şunu görüyoruz. Ee, bu sitenin, e, bu bu arada bu Z.org'dan değil, o, dolayısıyla yörelleri kapatmak zorunda kaldım. Ee, SSL sertifikası ile ilgili bir problemi olduğunu görüyoruz. Ee, bazen hani her tarayıcıda bu hatayı alamayabiliyorsunuz. Dolayısıyla sizin manuel kontrolleriniz de karşınıza çıkmayabilir. Hangi SSL sertifikası ne gibi şey alabilir? Burada şu an e, reason yazıyor, detayına bakmadım. E, SSL sertifikasının bağlantısında bir problem olduğu görüyor. Belki tarihi geçmiş olabilir. E, validasyonu uzatmak gerekebilir. Detayına bakmak gerekiyor. Ben burada bakmadım. E, şeyde. İkinci konu e, düşük kaliteli içeriğe sahip ve ya da e, çift içerik problemi oluşturan sayfaların tespiti. E, zaten içerik adında e, başlı başına bir raporumuz var. Deep Crawl'un içerisinde e, ben bu raporda da bu ekran görüntüsünde de e, çift zayıf içerikli bir e, zayıf içerikli sayfaların raporlandığı bir ee, ekran görüntüsü bu. Burada gördüğünüz gibi 90 e, kelimeden oluşan bir word count varmış sayfada. Dilersek crawl başlatmadan önce bu limitleri yani şu kadar kelimenin altında kelime barındıran sayfaları benim için sayfa olarak raporla diyebiliyoruz. Burası tamamen özelleştirebildiğimiz bir alan. Dilersek bu, buradaki sınırı 500 kelime olarak da belirleyebiliriz ama default gelen e, ayarlarda 90 kelime bir e, zayıf içerik problemine yol açıyor şeklinde gözüküyor. 
E, zayıf içeriğin Google'un söylediği üzere zayıf içerikli sayfalar bizim e, crawl rate'imizi düşürecek e, unsurlar. Dolayısıyla bütün sayfalarımızın özgün ve nitelikli içerik sunduğundan emin olmak lazım. E, bu raporda bu tarz sayfaları tespit edebilmek adına e, güzel daha sonra... Burada da şeyi görüyoruz, e, çift içerikli sayfaları görüyoruz. Şurada görebileceğiniz üzere bizim bir sayfamız, muhtemelen bu bir ürün şey e, sayfasıydı, bir e-ticaret sitesinden aldım bunu. E, ürün varyasyonları muhtemelen sadece renk değişiyor. Ama farklı yöreler altında sunulduğu için neredeyse e, sayfanın tamamı aynı içeriğe sahip ama değişen sadece bir renk bilgisi. Bu da sonuçta e, sayfaların çift içerik problemine yol açmasına e, sebep olmuş. Bunu buradan çok rahatlıkla e, görebiliyoruz. Tabii ki hani buradan e, sadece buradan arayüzden bakıp bir şey söylemek zor. Mutlaka o yörelere tek tek girip bakmanız ya da o siteyle e, birazcık vakit geçirmeniz gerekebiliyor. Problemlerin kaynaklarını anlayabilmeniz için. E, yine aynı şekilde e, çift içerik problemlerinde title, sayfa başlıkları ve e, açıklamalar çok önemli. Özellikle SERP'teki CTR oranlarımızı e, bu iki unsuru yöneterek e, değiştir, e, etkilememiz mümkün ya da arttırmamız mümkün. Burada da bizim, evet bu Zorg'dan, e, burada bir hata varmış. Şurada muhtemelen e, bu yörel nasıl oluştu? Şu an benim çok bir tahminim yok. Detayına bakmam lazım. E, ama burada alabileceğimiz bir aksiyon var. E, bir şekilde şuraya biz bir session ID gibi bir şey atmışız muhtemelen. Bunu hemen canonical etiketiyle parametre öncesi e, adresine referans gösterirsek bu problemi ortadan kaldırabiliriz. E, sonucunda da e, crawl bütçesi adına hatta bu sayfayı hiç e, site içinde linklemememiz lazım. Bakayım. Zaten linklememişiz. Bu da yine Googlebot'un e, bir şekilde ulaştığı sayfalardan birisi. Kaynağını mutlaka biraz daha derin analiz yapıp e, bulmak gerekir ki tekrar o sayfalara istek yapmasın. E, ama bu da sonuçta e, bizim için Tekrar ediyorsa eğer bu yöreller, bu yörellere dair daha fazla rapor varsa sadece 3 tane bu tarz hatamız varmış ama e, bir problem, crawl bütçesinin iyi yönetilmediğini gösteren bir nokta. E, en azından optimize edebileceğimiz bir nokta. Bundan sonra yönlendirmelerden bahsetmiştim. E, yine sadece yönlendirmeler için de bir raporumuz var. Burada site içerisinde ya da site haritalarında ya da crawl'u başlatmadan önce dahil ettiğimiz kaynaklarda e, deep crawl'un bulduğu yörellerin 300 yanıtı verip vermediğini gördüğümüz nokta. Rapor daha doğrusu. Ee, bunları mümkünse, e, bu örneğin buradaki örnekte bizim e, içeriklerimizi barındırdığımız bir site haritasında e, indekse kapattığımız bir sayfayı, e, 300 yanıtı veren bir sayfayı biz e, burada bağlantılıyormuşuz. Bu site haritasından bunu kaldırmamız gerekiyor ki Googlebot'u gereksiz yere bu sayfalarda dolaştırmayalım. Ondan hemen sonra e, steritaları için söylemiştim. E, ayrıca bir raporumuz var. Burada bir filtre kullandım ben bu rapora bakıyorken. E, deep Crawl'a dair benim en çok sevdiğim noktalardan birisi. Nabil de söyledi zaten. E, ne kadar büyük ölçekli web siteleriyle çalışırsanız çalışın arayüzü çok etkili ve filtre imkanları çok geniş. Dolayısıyla burada belki bir raporda e, hata üreten 10 bin yöreli Hemen filtrelerle çok 500 inceleyebileceğiniz kadar işte 500-400 yöreli kadar indirebiliyorsunuz. Dolayısıyla dosya indirmeden ya da Excel'e geçmeden arayüzde neredeyse analizinizin tamamını burada yapabiliyorsunuz. Ben burada şöyle bir filtre kullandım. Bizim site haritasında bağlantıladığımız ama indekslenebilir olmayan yörelleri bana göster dedim. Toplamda bu, bu, bu rapora dahil edilen, bu crawl'a dahil edilen site haritalarında yer alan 389 yörelin 44'ü. E, taramaya, indekslenmeye kapalıymış. Dolayısıyla benim bunları e, Googlebot'a göstermeme gerek yok. E, indekste dahil ettiğim bana organik trafik getirecek sayfaları e, taramasını tercih ederim ben. Do bir de bir diğer tarafta e, site içerisinde bağlantıladığım indekse açık ama site haritalarında yer vermediğim yöreller. Bir sayfa için site, site içerisindeki linklerde ve site haritalarında ne kadar çok bağlantı üretirsek Googlebot'a bu sayfa benim için o kadar önemli demiş oluyoruz. Dolayısıyla e, Googlebot'un o sayfayı daha sık taramasını sağlayabiliriz. Bu da az öncekinin tam, ter, ter, tam ters şeklinde ilerleyerek e, site haritasına eklemeniz, gerekti, eklemeniz gereken yörelleri bulabileceğiniz bir rapor. Bu da bir blog yöreliymiş. E, tabii ki e, bu da benim son zamanlarda e, e, çıkar çıkmaz kullanmaya başladığım özellik. 
e, log dosyalarını upload edebilme imkanımız. E, log dosyaları tamamen bizim bilmeyenler için söyleyeyim. E, kendi sunucularımızın kayıt altına aldığı ve e, o sunucuya gelen bütün isteklerin e, kaydedilebildiği e, dosyalar. Dolayısıyla birinci taraf bir veri Googlebot'un gerçekten sitemizde ne yaptığını e, orada doğrudan görebiliyoruz. E, bu, buradaki imkanımız da aslında e, tarama analizi sonucunda elde ettiğimiz raporların yanına e, Googlebot'un o yörelde URL'lerle ilişkisi ne aslında? Onu görebilme imkanımız var. Ben burada şöyle bir filtre kullandım. E, demiş ki son bir hafta içerisinde e, 5'ten az Googlebot isteği almış ve DeepRank skoru da birden düşük URL'leri bana göster demişim. E, bir hafta içerisinde e, 5'ten az e, Googlebot isteği almak bence bir skor. E, otoriter olmak isteyen bir web sitesi için. Dolayısıyla burada benim daha fazla e, taranmasını isteyeceğim yöreller olabilir. Bir de bunun yanında deep rank değeri küçük, e, düşük e, filtresini koyduğum zaman buyurun. Otoriter olmak için mi dediniz? Otorite olmak için mi? Nasıl? Otoriter bir site olmak için mi dediniz? Otoriter evet, bir otoriter bir site olabilmek için. Ne kastım? Ya burada şöyle e, sektörüyle alakalı tüm aramalarda e, kendini Google'da arama, arama motorlarında gösterebilen insanların markalı Otorite. aramalar yaptı. Hı -hı. Tamam öyle olsun. Otorite olsun. Her Kusura bakmayın. Bu hayır tabii ki değil. Tabii ki değil ve zaten bu e, ölçebildiğimiz bir skor değil. Yani ben az önce en başta söylediğim gibi bence dedim. Ve otoriteyi biz ölçemiyoruz. Yani o sadece bizim kafamızda e, uydurduğumuz bir şey aslında. Sitedeki, Maalesef onu sitedeki, sitedeki trafik de bunu etkiliyor. Tabii ki. Aynen öyle. Ya zaten baktığımız metriklerin başında e, arama motorlarında hangi sıralamalara sahibiz? Hangi kelimelerde yer alabiliyoruz? Ve ne kadar organik trafiğimiz var? Birazcık iş buna bakıyor. Ya top 3 her zaman şeydir yani. O başarı değil. Evet o. Ya üç, ilk 3'teyseniz o, o bir başarıdır. 2'yi biri zorluyorsanız da çok, çok çok daha yani yapabileceğiniz en iyisi zaten. E, dolayısıyla ben bu raporda şunu görüyorum. Tekrar özetlersem. E, Googlebot tarafından az taranan ve benim de site içerisinde ya da e, site haritalarında az bağlantıladığım sayfalar. Bundan sonra şunu yapmam lazım. Buraya gelip örneğin ikinci URL. Bu bizim bir, e, bir blog içeriğimiz. Bence güzel bir konu. E, ana, aram hacmini bilmiyorum konuyla alakalı anahtar kelimelerin ama e, mutlaka iyi pozisyonlarda yer almak isteyeceğimiz e, sayfalardan birisi. Şu anki pozisyonu da bilmiyorum. E, ama zaten burada yapabileceğiniz analiz şu an için bu kadar. E, bu sayfaya gidip e, şuna bakmam lazım. Ben bu sayfayı daha e, deep rankini daha yukarı taşıyabilmek için ne yapabilirim? Zaten birkaç tane aracınız var. Az önce de söyledim. Site içerisinde bu sayfaya bağlantı üretebilirim. Belki alakalı konularda e, ürettiğim içeriklerden e, doğru anchor tekstlerle içerik çıkabilirim. E, link çıkabilirim bu sayfaya. Ya da belki yapabiliyorsam outfit çalışmasıyla backlink inşa etmeye çalışabilirim bu sayfaya. E, dolayısıyla burası da e, crawl bütçesinin sayfa, seviyesi, sayfa seviyesinde yönetilebilmesi adına e, önemli bir rapor. E, burada tabii ki daha fa yapabileceğiniz daha fazla şey var. Bu log summary feature'ın altında sanırım 3 farklı rapor var. Ben sadece bir tanesinden e, ekran görüntüsü aldım. E, analizinizi dilediğiniz gibi burada e, çeşitlendirip zenginleştirebiliyorsunuz. Bu da sanırım e, sondan bir önceki slide'ım. E, Nabil de bahsetti. Ee, ve ben benim de favorimin Analytics'e karşı Search Console olduğunu söyledim. Burada da aslında yine sayfa seviyesinde bir e, şey yapabiliyoruz. Bir e, potansiyel analizi yapabiliyoruz. Yani benim hangi sayfalarım crawl bütçesinin optimizasyonuna ihtiyaç duyuyor. Hangi sayfalarım daha fazla taranmalı. E, bunu tespit edebildiğimiz noktalardan birisi. Örneğin ben yine Deep Rank metriğini kullanmışım burada. E, Google'unkine benzer bir e, Page Rank algoritması olduğunu söylemiştim. Bunun zaten e, örneğin şurada bir sayfamız varmış bizim. Deep Rank'i oldukça düşük. E, Search Console'da e, son ayda 23 bin impression üretmiş. Yani oldukça güzel bir aranma hacmi var demek ki bu sayfanın listelendiği kelimelerde. Ama bizim ortalama pozisyonumuz 21'miş bu, bu sayfanın listelendiği kelimelerde. Tıklanma oranımız da çok düşükmüş. Dolayısıyla ben bu sayfaya gerçekten ele alıp bu sayfa için çalışmaya başlayabilirim. Tabii ki SEO adına ne yapmak istiyorsak onları yapabiliriz ama teknik SEO perspektifinden baktığımızda bu sayfanın bence ilk başta site içerisinde daha fazla bu sayfaya bağlantı üretilmesi gerekiyor. Ki şu Deep Rank skorunu yukarıya taşıyalım. Bunun Google tarafındaki karşılığı da hem bu sayfaya gelecek daha fazla crawl isteği 
Dolayısıyla ve bunun sonucunda da bizim aslında bu sayfayı ön plana çıkarmak istediğimiz Google Bot'a aktarmamız e, diğer yapacağımız çalışmalarla birlikte beklenen sonuç bu sayfanın arama motorlarındaki performansının iyileşmesi. Efendim? Kesinlikle öyle ama onun düşük olması zaten bizim pozisyonumuzun çok düşük olmasından kaynaklanıyor. Dolayısıyla zaten iyi performans gösteremediği için daha CTR optimizasyonu yapmama gerek yok. Önce birazcık ilk sayfanın ortalarına kadar taşıyıp ondan sonra CTR tarafında bir geliştirme yapmaya çalışmalıyım. Yani benim düşüncem böyle. Farklı yaklaşımlar olabilir. Ee, bundan hemen sonra da Stazı zaten çok önemli bir konu. Burada çok detaya girmeme gerek yok sanırım. Hepimiz biliyoruz Stazı'nın e, sayfa hızlarının kullanıcı deneyimini hatta dönüşümü e, ne kadar e, etkilediği noktası hepimizin bildiği bir şey. Stazı'na dair e, site çapında bir analizi Google Analytics'ten alabiliyoruz bunun dışında. Yani bir automated bir, eğer bir geliştirme e, bütçeniz varsa tabii ki bu tarz bir tool üretebilirsiniz. E, ama Google Analytics bir seçenek. Google Analytics de keyfine göre ölçümlemeleri yapıyor. Yani her sayfanızın e, yüklenme sürelerini ölçmüyor. E, ama burada doğrudan bizim sayfalarımızın taramaya dahil edilen bütün sayfaları zaten deep crawl download ettiği için bize o sayfaları indirme sürelerinin ne olduğunu söylüyor. E, bu fetch e, performans ve fetch time raporunun altında 3 farklı başlık var. Ben hata diyebileceğimiz max fetch time raporundan bir ekran görüntüsü aldım. E, bu rapora baktığımda Örneğin e, bu sayfanın yüklenmesi 4,5 saniye gibi bir süre e, almış. Beklenen sürenin bu, bu arada Deep Crawl JavaScript'leri e, çalıştırmıyor. E, imajları download etmiyor. Bu sadece HTML'in ve CSS'in e, indirilmiş versiyonu. E, hali, süresi daha doğrusu. E, dolayısıyla aslında bu sayfanın gerçek bir kullanıcı için yüklenme süresi muhtemelen 4,5 saniyeden daha fazla. Dolayısıyla bu bizim e, endişelenmemiz gereken bir konu. E, site hızımızı mutlaka iyileştirecek adımları almamız gerekiyor. E, sanırım genel olarak bu kadardı. Buyurun. Bu e, e, evet. Şöyle yani. farklı kompütür veya kesinlikle öyle. Ya muhtemelen bu teknik soruyu e, Deep Crawl'dan arkadaşlarımıza sorabiliriz ama muhtemelen e, dağıtımlı bir server kullanımları var. Yani aynı benzer lokasyonlardan gelmiyordur o istekler Deep Crawl'un yaptıkları. Ve tabii ki bir bağlantı hızına da sahip. Normalde hani sitemize gelen kullanıcılar çok farklı bağlantı hızlarından gelebiliyor. Wi-Fi'de çok farklı bir performansımız olabilir. 3G'de farklı bir performansımız olabilir ya da cihaza göre değişebilir. Dolayısıyla bu aslında bizim için... Ee, bir referans noktası sadece yani bunu mutlak doğru olarak kabul etmemize gerek yok. Um, yeah, thanks Yeget, uh, first of all, and thanks um, Mehmet, uh, Zeynep and the whole Zeo team. I can just um, um, repeat was, what Nabil was saying. It's really nice to be here and you, you've been so nice to us. Um, and thanks um, for giving us the opportunity to, to be here. Um, so yeah, good evening everybody. Um, we've so yeah we've seen so far like really nice uh, presentations, and um, I hope you you got some great insights from from them. Um, unfortunately, I don't understand Turkish, but um, I think Ada uh, Ada did a really good job. I I, I only can say merhaba and teşe <laughs> Um Yeah, so it's quite limited, but uh, the the slides they looked uh, fantastic. <laughs> um, <clears throat> So yeah, what I want to talk about um, today is basically what we can take um, from those presentations and um, how we can um, basically implement that using a tool like DeepCrawl. Um, so, and how like, to basically start optimizing um, SEO foundations, uh, maintaining them, and make, make the most um, out of the tool. So um, because we know the first the first step to uh, success is um, the identification of a problem or an issue. And um, yeah, that's why it's important to, um, to get started. And um, <clears throat> so what, um, what I want to show you is um, how you can combine all those different um, sorts of um, crawl data, like log, file, log files, backlinks, uh, Google Search Console, um, all those, um, those different data um, Nabil and uh, Erdal were, were bringing up earlier. 
Um, so let's, um, let's start with, um, with setting up a crawl, um, because this is the best way to, to show you how to do it with Deepcrawl. And uh, just before we jump into it, um, Nabil was earlier, he was uh, asking how many of you have heard of Deepcrawl. Can I ask how many uh, are actually Deepcrawl users? If you just raise your arm. Nice, yeah, a few. Um, so let me just jump into the um, setup. So this is, it's, it's, very, um, it's a very easy setup. So it's just uh, four steps. And um, the first step is, um, is just entering the domain. You can see it here. Um, if you click on check, then the canonical um, domain is, um, is identified or found straight away. Um, so it's very simple. The second step, um, which I want to focus on now, is um, are, are the different sources you can, you can integrate. So here it's where it becomes really interesting. Um, Nabil mentioned the gap analysis. Uh, Erda mentioned also um, source gaps um, of the sitemap, for example. But um, starting from the, from the top, we have the, the website. Um, in order to obviously to get a full picture of, of your website, it's always important to, to crawl um, the full site at first. So you can also use deep crawl um, for migrations, for example, HTTPS migrations. And um, you just need to click, um, click this box here. So to identify if you still have mixed content, if you haven't migrated fully yet to HTTPS. Um, the second, second source here are sitemaps. So that is um, just if you want to optimize your sitemaps, if you, uh, um, if you have gaps, like if you have URLs that are in sitemaps and in the, um, uh, and in the website, um, that's what, what we saw earlier, like the different, um, uh, the different pillars. So you can upload sitemaps, you can um, add the URL, the sitemap URL, if you like, and then always make sure that this is um, active. Then the next source is the Google Search Console. Everyone knows like, how valuable the Google Search Console is. And we, um, yeah, we, we get a lot of data from it. So what we are focusing at DeepCore is on uh, search analytics. Um, so we look at um, clicks, impressions, um, and um, at the ranking. So you have also the option here to configure some settings here. For example, you can choose the, the country. Um, you can choose um, search types. So image search is becoming very valuable in e-commerce businesses. Um, but also you can, um, you can choose a minimum um, amount of clicks. Um, as well as the date range you can, you can choose. And you can, for example, exclude some non-branded keywords. If you, just an example, if you want, oh, if you want to exclude um, Turkish Airlines, as an example. Um, so, so yeah, this is, this is very powerful. Um, another thing worth mentioning is that like, we, can, um, we can get uh, more than 1,000, which is the limit in Google Search Console, so we can get um, uh, all of the URLs um, out, of, uh, out of Search Console. Um, as well as that we are basically the only tool that, um, that show you device-specific SERP metrics. So um, we can crawl uh, mobile and desktop at the same time, and um, which is, um, I'm not sure if, if, if we saw it earlier in the presentations, but you can see basically if you're ranking um, on the wrong device, if you have mobile pages that receive um, traffic on desktop or the other way around. Um, then the next, the next step is uh, analytics. So, Obviously, again, very powerful. You, can, um, you saw the web crawl depth graph earlier um, with the different levels. And if you integrate analytics, for example, and you have lots of visits, um, lots of visits at URLs that are quite deep down in the site architecture, so you may want to push them forward um, to, to basically um, 
um, yeah, to make them make them um, crawl more frequently by Googlebot and for the user experience as well. It's, um, it's a big win. Um, then we have backlinks. Again, very valuable, important information. So you want to see if you have often pages with, with backlinks, if you have non-indexable pages with backlinks. Um, so we can here integrate all sorts of um, uh, providers. So like if you have Ahrefs, Majestics, or Google Search Console, uh, link research tools, um, you can integrate all of those. And, um, and again, you have, yeah, quick fixes. If you see often pages or disallowed pages with backlinks, just um, issue a task in, in DeepCrawl and then you can, um, you can send it over to your developer. And um, it's just a um, yeah, very, very quick fix. The next, uh, the next source is, uh, are logs. So this is a very new release. We released that like two weeks ago. Um, actually, the Search Console was, is also a very new release. So um, we are aiming, or we are, what we are basically um, emphasizing at DeepCrawl is like a, a search universe. So you have lots of different data just in one crawl report. Um, you can see that at the, uh, at the flyers as well. So um, that is basically giving you the opportunity to combine, ingest all the data um, and, and match that with the deep crawl metrics. But in terms of log files, um, we, you can uh, integrate like uh, such uh, screaming frog analyzer or some mid-range um, mid tools like LogZero uh, or some enterprise tools like Splunk. Um, but also open, log, um, uh, open source log analyzers. Um, they're also very popular and very cost effective, especially. So um, this is what we are, um, yeah, we are, like DeepCrow is basically enabling to, um, to, to ingest data from any log file analyzer. Um, so um, yeah, giving you an opportunity to, um, also if you don't have like a, a huge SEO budget, you can basically get it for, for, um, for little, little cost. And the last, um, the last option here is a URL list. Um, so you can see it here. So this is basically uh, used for miscellaneous things, for migrations, again, you can check if your redirects um, are implemented correctly, uh, or uh, if you have high priority URLs you want to crawl on a regular basis. Um, to make sure everything is correct with those. Um, so yeah, these are um, the different sources. So, so the, the nice thing is here, you can like mix and match these. So if you want um, the comparison, the gap in that gap comparison between um, just the um, backlinks, the log summary, and the website, you can choose just those. But uh, we, we always, we highly recommend to, um, to get yeah, the, the richest um, report and um, integrate all of those data. So um, Airdial, he did a really good job showing you earlier like some filters, um, which are really powerful, um, which you can also um, yeah, combine, like um, if, you have, if you just want to filter for uh, indexable pages um, within a specific report or like uh, for deep rank, that's, um, that's all possible here. Um, yeah. So these are, um, we, are, we don't have, um, unfortunately, don't have time to go through, through all, the, all the settings. Um, but I know um, we couldn't cover everything, so. But um, please um, feel free to, um, to come to grab me on a beer um, after our sessions to, um, yeah, to basically um, go into more detail, go into through, through the tool and also um, show how you specifically, how we, how we can help you specifically for your sites. And um, I just want to show you um, another slide. <laughs> Which is basically, um, yeah, is also on your, on your flyers. Uh, so, Highlighting again, like we are, yeah, the only only crawler that can combine all of those different data sources to make it um, to make it uh, most valuable for you. 
And um, last but not least, um, yeah, uh, Tesche. Te oh, this is Tesche für Ederim. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. This night I will teach some Turkish words too. <laughs> maybe maybe this, some of them were bad ones. Yeah. And yeah, let, let, let's uh, get the questions after than that. And we get nearly more than 20 questions by Twitter. And I'm getting one by one, thanks to Zeynep. She's sending the screenshots. So I want to invite Nabil, Nico, and Erd Erdal <laughs> to here. But you are calling like Eda. <laughs> Yes, I am the translator of today, and I will ask the questions to you. So uh, we get some questions from tutors, and I need to prioritize them first. And we have like 20 minutes to answer them. So uh, let's start with the first one. Um, I need to check. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, Mehmet Tanlak is asking that uh, can we create some kind of custom reports on the crawl and what kind of personalization maybe we can apply to the reports and actually and it gets oh, yeah. just a few hours uh, ago but uh, your presentation is also answered some of them but we can maybe hear some answers from you yeah um, so we can use um custom reports by, by filtering, by match, like combining different filters um, to really go deep down um, into the data. And yeah, you can save those filters as well. You can, um, you can automate um, um, those reports. So you get an automated um, alert every time um, you run the crawl and the crawl is finalized. But um, <laughs> yeah, it is, it is possible to, um, to to get customized reports by just really knowing what you're looking for um, and, um, and use the filters for that, yeah. Yeah, oh, nice answer. And there is another question from Turgay Celik. Uh, why do I keep getting failed URLs on Webmaster Tools even though I remove them from index? Maybe it's just a technical question. Maybe you want to answer for this but, but I didn't get the question. Yeah. Why do I keep getting failed URLs on Google Webmaster Tools even though I remove them from index? And it's also some of the examples on the your presentation uh, shown and an example about it. Actually, you shared some uh, 404 reports about Zio, and they are not linked from anywhere. And I think that this question is asking for the details of the situation. Should I answer in English? Uh, I think it's... Türkçe gidebilirim. Yeah, I think you can continue in Turkish. Ya sanırım problem, e, soruyu soran buradaysa daha fazla detay verebilse daha iyi olabilir ama anladığım kadarıyla e, site içinde bağlantılamadığımız yörellerden Googlebot için e, hata uyarısı alıyor. Aynen, Webmaster Tools'tan geliyor. geliyor. Tamam, e, Google daha önce o Sıraçkası. sayfayı keşfettiyse site içerisinde o sayfaya tekrar bağlantı üretmesek dahi Ee, o yörelleri tekrar taramaya devam edecektir. Hiçbir zaman bırakmıyor. Ee, asla hani ben bu sayfayı unuttum bir daha taramayacağım demiyor. Çünkü eğer o yörel altında bir gün e, günün birinde üretilecek bir kıymetli bir içerik varsa ondan mahrum kalmak istemediği için e, bir sayfamız belki son 20 isteğine dahi Googlebot'un e, 404 yanıtı dönse bile belki 5 ay sonra, belki 6 ay sonra, belki 1 sene sonra o yöreli tekrar tarayacaktır. Dolayısıyla e, Googlebot asla unutmuyor. Çok güçlü bir hafızası var. E, taramaya devam edecektir. İki soru daha alayım hemen sonra sizlere de döneyim. Uh, Yusuf Barutçu asked that uh, how can I take advantage of orphan pages? Actually you have a special report for it and what kind of actions maybe we can get from the... Yeah, so I would actually say there is... So orphan pages are really interesting to, to look at because obviously you can have different types of orphans. You can have um, so pages that were so again uh, pages that, that weren't linked internally. But how did we find them? So maybe they were in your sitemaps. Maybe they were in your um, they were, they have backlinks. Maybe they were found through Search Console or GA, um, or maybe they're just a random list of URLs that you know you have out there. So each one would probably be dealt with differently, but. Um, obviously, sorry, there's one more, which is um, the, the orphans that were found through um, because they were crawled by Googlebot. It's, it's really interesting. In, in this case, 
what you'd want to do is you'd want to take advantage of um, your pages that have um, that have that either high uh, deep rank or high bot activity on them. So you, the you, the pages that you know um, Google bot is actually crawling quite actively, and then link your orphans to, to that page, or quite the, the other way around. Make sure that your orphan pages are linked from these popular pages, either pages with high deep rank or pages with high uh, bot activity. Um, that's one of the ways to, to take advantage of, of orphan pages. But to be honest, just linking them internally just will we'll start, we'll start helping. These, these pages are valuable for, for a reason. Either they're, you know, again, uh, having traffic either from search engines or, or from, from uh, people uh, surfing the web. They're valuable pages. You want to boost their, their authority just a little bit by, by linking them internally. Yeah. And uh, another question from Mustafa Kasim, and lots of good questions in here. Uh, thank you, Murat. Sorry, not Mustafa. Uh, digital zone rumuzda bir sayfanın başka sayfalarla duplicate olduğunu belirlemede kullanılan metrikler nelerdir diyor. Uh, what kind of metrics you are using for understanding the internal duplicate content? Is it maybe the site wide or the web wide? Yeah. So yeah, the we we use three three metrics to to define duplicate pages. Um, so for a page to be duplicated, it needs to have an identical title. It needs to have an identical description. So again, meta title and meta description. And it needs to have a near identical uh, body content. So anything outside of tags uh, that's considered content, um, roughly 80 to 90% similarity. Um, anything above that, and if it has these three uh, criteria, then uh, it will be flagged as a duplicate page. Can we change the similarity ratio? You can change uh, the similarity of the body, yeah, absolutely, yeah. in the advanced settings. Yeah. But I, I have to say, very, very few people actually do, because we're, we're quite strict as to um, the level of similarity. And bear in mind that every, every report that we actually publish is based on um, tests that we run regularly. So DeepCrawl was built by SEOs. It's still uh, led by SEOs. Um, our CEO um, and, and our chief of product are both the, the founders. And they're running tests regularly. We have a, a dynamic platform that constantly changes the, the, the length of titles, the, dupli um, the similarity of content, to make sure that our, our data is accurate. Uh, and as a result, to make sure your data is accurate, too. OK. Maybe, sorry, maybe one more thing to yeah, um, yeah. duplicates. Um, we have one report, which is also really valuable. Um, if you have a lot of, lot of duplicates, it's a um, duplicate page set report. So you have. Basically, um, all the set, uh, all the duplicates <coughs> within one set, um, listed in in one report. Yeah, I'm I'm using this in every day. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. It, it's just updated nearly a few months ago. It's new feature. It, yeah, it was improved. Yes, um, yeah. We we we used to call it grouping, and it was very confusing. Yeah, yeah. What uh, I love about the deep crawl is you're always updating the stuff, and the new change logs are always uh, funny to read. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and. Another question uh, from, um, yeah, uh, from Orkan. Do you think will SEO be even wider business area at the future, actually? Um, your approach for crawl analysis. What do you think about the future of the SEO and how the crawl analysis will position itself for the future of SEO? Mm. Uh, that's a, a, a tough question. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> um, to be honest, this is... Um, yeah, it's not like just product-related question, yeah. but yeah. And you know, uh, SEO is changing every year, and you are also pos changing your position yeah. to these yeah. algorithm updates. And actually, maybe we can talk about the Panda algorithms, and, yeah. and like the three or four years ago, and you cannot find any near duplicate contents by using the Screaming Frog and other offline uh, solutions, yeah. like non-cloud-based solutions. So after then that, it's also improvement for deep crawl, which is helping for the potential uh, Panda algorithm update victims. No, exactly. I mean, when, when Panda came out, that was sort of, we felt very confident that the yeah. SEO was going in, in the right direction, especially because it was, it was focusing most, uh, mostly on, on the quality of the content that, and forcing people to, to play by, by the rules. Uh, with regards to the future, I mean, obviously search is going to become more and more related to um, Artificial, artificial intelligence. We, you know, we're seeing sort of a, a reduction in the use of PageRank. I mean, the fact that it was completely 
discontinued or at least stopped uh, being shared with, with users just showed that the fact that Google is moving more and more towards intelligent search, um, towards, uh, towards AI. But having, having said that, it's, uh, you know, it, it just shows the value of content. You need, you need to make sure that your content is, is constantly uh, up to date, that it's accurate, that it's not duplicated. Um, obviously, to, to make sure that you're, you're answering questions. I know, you know many, many people type today. I mean, think of, of yourself. Last time you, the last time you used Google, what did you do? You probably typed in a question or you, you, were, you were looking for something. So it's about it's about answering these and making sure in your in your pages and making sure that um, the yeah the the, the robots that, that artificial intelligence can understand actually what's what's on your pages. Um, but I, at the end of the day, technical SEO will always be valuable. Um, you want to make sure that your pages are fast. You want to make you know uh, like Erdan was saying, you want to make sure that you're um, you've got unique uh, unique stuff that your the bots are easily accessing them. Um, so technical SEO is not going to yeah, go anywhere. Yeah, so if you want to see the overview, you need to use a crawler, actually, for the migration situation to the, uh, just improving the web performance and actually for the page speed perspective. And to understand the huge data, you cannot just check one page. Actually, for the, such a big e-commerce website, which has more than a million pages, and mm -hmm. also it's the feature, and it's a mandatory need for most of the big clients. Yeah. Yeah. And another thing is um, mobile search obviously is becoming more and more important. So we are um, yeah, quite well equipped uh, that front as well yeah. with mobile first index coming probably next year. Um, yeah, we are trying to prepare all our clients um, for that as well. So like to see the differences between mobile and desktop, um, content wise, words wise, uh, link wise, etc. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe I can add something in Turkish and mobile first indexing aynı zamanda da Google'un bütün indeksleme biçimini değiştirmesi anlamına geliyor. Hani deep crawl gibi araçlar da bu tip hazırla bu tip bir değişime hazırlıklı olmak için kendi indeksleme metotlarını baştan sona değiştiriyorlar. Deep crawl da bununla ilgili yatırımlar yaptı. Hatta I think that Mikal at Digital Zone will talk about the mobile first indexing and the technical part. Yeah. Yeah, uh, what do you think about AMP? Do you have something special integration and? Yeah, we we can we can flag and identify um, whether or not your your AMP pages are configured properly, um, with regards to how people feel about AMP. I know that it's sort of a um, a hot topic at work at the office itself because some people believe in it, some others don't. I mean, it is sort of a contradiction from, from Google um, when, when you think about the fact that Google's been pushing. In fact, their, their last webmaster uh, blog post was about pushing people towards responsive pages. So the fact that they're pushing also for the AMP project is a bit contradictory because um, it's, it's essentially a, a, a second mobile alternate uh, page. Um, but they're, they're, I, you under, I understand as well why, why they're doing it. They're competing against Facebook. They're they're trying to to get, um, you know, more money out of uh, advertising. It, it it all makes sense, uh, at least for Google. Yeah, and you have AMP reports for general overview, but also in the search console, you can just reach the small details of the all the incorrect implementations of the AMP. So you have enough tools to uh, fix these problems too. So. Um, I will get some questions, but some of them are directly SEO-related stuff, so I want to uh, use your expertise, actually. So you have any questions directly to ask? Uh, maybe I can get your question. Is it answered yet? Okay. Okay. Uh, yeah. One-to-one -one question. Uh, so my question is, can be a little bit wide, in a wide aspect, because I am quite new in this topic. I just want to learn that how Google see deep crawl as a partner or as a threat because I know that you're trying to increase the quality of the websites but in some part I understand that you manipulating it manipulating it in somehow so is Google supporting you do you have a relationship with Google do they ask you okay we're gonna do this you should know that prepare yourself <laughs> kind of stuff the, there's question yeah there's a, <laughs> Yeah, no, that's true. Um, they definitely, we definitely, uh, they don't warn us about anything. Again, we rely on on uh, this dynamic site that constantly changes to notice when Google is changing uh, their behavior. Um, 
but we, we, I think Google, Google sees us as a partner. Um, I, I can only assume this based on the relationship we have online. Um, I know that the marketing team and, and uh, often interacts with uh, John Mueller, who's, who's in charge of um, the sort of... Um, Public relations? Public relations, some people would say, yeah. Uh, but uh, <laughs> making, uh, making sure that um, he's part of the, um, what's his title? The, the, the Web Trends, Trend Analyst. Web Trend Data Analyst, yeah. yeah. Which basically means, yeah, so for some people it means public relations, for others it means that he's, he's there to make sure that the algorithm uh, is working uh, properly and to address any webmaster's concerns. So he's, he's the public face, uh, at least for, for, for Google. And he often interacts with, with us, at least. Um, and he, he interacts with, with most SEOs uh, on Twitter, answering their questions. Um, so I think when, when it comes to, to that, I, they see us as a partner because we're, we're helping webmasters out there um, by, by making sure that their content is, is better for Google. And if it's better for Google, it's better for Google's users. Um, and um, so yeah, we, we, it works hand in hand. And at the end of the day, Search Console is very similar to, to DeepCrawl. It's a, it's a very light version. It reports on broken pages, it reports, reports on, on software force, but we, we sort of go a step further and, and help you beyond that. Yeah, nice question. And the next one is related with Deep Crawl 2. Uh, what do you think about the authority, actually? Uh, the authority website, but less relevant, or relevant, but less authoritative? What, which one do you prefer? Another question from Murat Kassim. Well, uh, I, I don't understand. It's really tough to understand, even in Turkish. <laughs> but it's a nice question, but the complex one. Uh, will you prefer authority but um, less relevant or uh, less relevant and authoritative? And I, don't know if, I don't know if this person is here. So I, I have, is the person here who has the Murat, question? Kurdum, Murat Kas. Oh, yeah. Uh, okay. um, is this with regards to um, the, the notion of, of link building? So sending certain authority based on the anchor text? Or is it... Um, just authority in general of a of a page. Maybe it's just you, you say it in Turkish if you want. Yes, yeah, asıl sormak istediğim e, otoriter ama e, alaka düzeyi az bir sistemi backlink için daha çok tercih edilebilir. Yoksa Alaka düzeyi çok fazla, mesela sektörel bir blog olabilir, e, diğer e, örnek içinde bir haber sitesi olabilir mesela. E, ama e, alak otoritesi biraz daha düşük mü? Maybe from the best practice perspective, yeah. I can say that relevancy and yeah, sure. the, the without authority relevancy is so uh, poor metric. But you, you need to have relevancy first, and if you have enough authority but no relevancy, you have less chance than the other situation. So I think. Ben öyle düşünüyorum. Yani alakalılık daha önemli. Bir tık öne çıkıyor sanki orada. Ee, zaten hani o webdeki bağlantıların bir anlamı var ya hani bizi bir yerden bir yere götürüyor ee, ama nereden nereye götürdüğü de önemli. Google'un zaten o bağlantılar arasında ilişkiyi kuruyorken baktığı şeylerden birisi de e, bu içerik ne hakkında ve oradan çıkan bağlantı e, neden bahsediyor? O bağlantı gittiğinde ne görüyor? Dolayısıyla bunun hem sayfa düzeyinde yani o backlinki ürettiğimiz sayfa düzeyinde e, aynı zamanda o sayfanın bulunduğu domain düzeyinde de e, bir ilişkililik mutlaka bulunması gerekiyor. Aksi takdirde bunun daha yapay bir görüntüde olacağına şüphemiz yok zaten. E, dolayısıyla bence otoritenin önüne geçen nokta sadece e, ilişkililik orada. Ya aslında otorite bile temelde bir ilişkililik. Çünkü Google sadece o gelen bağlantının e, gücüne bakmıyor. O gelen bağlantının içeriğine de bakıyor. Hatta Majestic bunu e, topical trust flow olarak bir metrikte de kendisi e, açıklamaya gayret ediyor. Dolayısıyla ilişkililik diyebiliriz bu soruya. Ben de. Eğer tek ben. kelimelik bir cevap vereceksek. Yes. <gülüyor> we answered for you. 
Thank you. And it was all correct, by the way. It was, it was spot on. I couldn't have said it better myself. <laughs> you agree with him, okay. Um, yeah. Uh, lots of cool questions, but I will get uh, one of the last one. I've seen a good one. Yeah, yeah. I and mean, what what type of log files uh, are yeah. Yeah. Integrate. are supported? Yeah, the um, basically any any um, log file analyzer, mm -hmm. um, like if, it, if it's Screaming Frog um, log file analyzer, which is um, um, cheap. Then log zero, which is like mid-range. Mm -hmm. Splunk is a little bit more expensive, but open, there's a lot of open source uh, log file analyzer, elastic ones. Um, um, we, I also I know of a really good um, uh, link article, which um, which I can send you. Um, so so I, I first need to open my log files with one of these tools, yeah. and then export the file, and then upload the code, yeah. right? Yeah, exactly. so we so I'll just explain because this is this is a very interesting. There's a very interesting reason why we decided to do it this way. Um, there's there's very little relation, uh, very little um, similarity in the technology mm -hmm. between um, crawling and log file analysis, or just any analysis of that that that kind of depth. Bear in mind that when you're you're dealing with raw logs, you're you could be dealing with depending on on on the ranges as well that you're looking at, at gigabytes or even terabytes sometimes, of of data. Analyzing through so much um, information is very very difficult, even if it is just stripping out Googlebot. Mm -hmm. um, so and there's absolutely no um, no similarity with with crawling, which is our specialty. So what we decided instead is uh, instead of doing doing two things poorly, um, we would do one thing or at least concentrate and hoping that we're, we're doing crawling properly and just stay and keep doing that. And instead, you guys can pick whatever log file analyzer you want, uh, find the one that suits you better, so that we don't overcharge you either, and then uh, integrate that data into Deep Crawl. And it's as, e as easy as that. It's it's just another free source basically. Yeah, it's ba it's ba because they are like quite a few um, like expensive log for analyzers. It's just for you giving you the um, opportunity to like choose the one that suits your requirements. And um, if it's cheap, then it's amazing. <laughs> and um, yeah, then just integrate it. Okay, the last question comes from Mehmet Emre Bash. And we analyzed server logs and then found the pages that Google bought visits more than 10, for instance. Uh, how we will use this page for such a benefit, and maybe we can say that under what's the correlation between the crawl data and the visitor data and the crawl data? How how how can we make this universal and meaningful, creating a meaningful inference by using that much diversified data sources? So, um, the my first the. My first answer about orphan pages is similar to this one as well, um, and it, it overlaps a little bit. Um, basically, take advantage of these pages, the ones that you know have more than 10. I don't know uh, what's the time frame, but imagine you have more than 10 visits in, in a week's time. Um, make sure that they're linked really well to your pages that are struggling a bit more. Um, there are two. There are three reports. There is a report called uh, no bot activity, low bot activity, and then high bot activity in deep crawl. If you take the ones with high bot activity and make sure that they're um, they're linking very well to the low bot or to the no bot activity, then you can make sure to spread that um, activity and make sure that Googlebot accesses your these pages a bit more regularly. Um, I'd say more importantly, though. That that might be a short term fix, but make sure that the ones with low or no bot activity are are well configured and, and well optimized for for Google. They might they might be really slow, so you can again take advantage of the filters um, to look at how many of these pages are really slow. So look at uh, go to the no bot activity um, report and filter out how many of these pages take more than two seconds to be fetched. And again, this is fetch time, that's not load time. Load time is, is a different metric that affects user experience. What affects uh, search engine experience is fetch time. And you might find that there's actually a high correlation between high fetch time and, um, and low bot activity. It might be that Google bot is giving up. You might also notice that there are failed URLs in there as well. Yeah, great answer. And 
I think that we have no questions to answer right now. And did I miss something? Any question? The last ones we can get. Okay. Two two more questions. I'll I'll translate right away. Yeah. quick and uh, more important to me. Uh, I'm like our colleague also, a sort of a uh, beginner uh, as well. Uh, can you uh, can you give the, the correlation or relationship uh, that, you know, uh, from the best examples, best practice cases alive, uh, that we can go ahead and uh, analyze ourselves, uh, what makes them actually uh, that uh, you you dig into the uh, uh, with with numbers and metrics yeah. and so so that they are the best. Can we visualize ourselves? Uh, and can you give just a top three? And uh, attached to that is that is that in industry specific or is there a kind of a rating among all all the webs websites? That I don't know that there's a ranking. I don't know uh, for for, for so SEO quality, uh, but. Authority, being an authority yeah. in that uh, perspective. So what I meant when I was, let me address that and then I'll, I'll answer the, the first part of your question. Um, by authority, it's really how much um, traffic, how many links are pointing to a specific page. This, this, the links, and this, is, this falls outside of DeepCrawl's um, realm of expertise, but there's many things that will affect um, the authority, right? How much... How, how important that tra um, that authority is being spread. Some people call it link juice, some people call it authority. Um, <clears throat> there's obviously the anchor text, which is what I was trying to, ref uh, which is what I mentioned earlier. But beyond anchor text, there's the title of that page, there's the body of that page. So what is it exactly it's talking about? If it has something that's it's completely different, I was speaking about it with, um, with someone uh, here earlier. If <clears throat> if your page has nothing to do with what it's linking to, you could have the best anchor text. It's not going to pass as much authority. So this is what I meant by authority. And there's several different other uh, criteria um, that that affect it. To go back to the first part of your question about case studies or understanding what what is it for beginners that that they have to do to to really have the the best the best uh, effect in the short term. Uh, I'd say yeah. yeah you I try to ask what are the best three in this world that fulfills to be the best? The best three. Um, a that's, that's a million dollar question. question, yeah. Maybe we, you can... One, one, something that might come up into your mind. So I was, I was actually going to say, so I was, this, is, this is my answer because it'll, it'll depend really on... So for example, I could easily say it's duplicate content, it's duplicate pages. But if your site has absolutely no duplicate pages, then, well, you, that's not a top three. Um, so what I, what I actually suggest is if you haven't run a crawl, and I know this is a sales pitch even though I'm not a salesperson here, but if you haven't run a crawl, run a crawl. You, you'll find the top, the, the top three, in fact, you'll, you'll find the top six issues in your crawl in the top left hand corner. We've highlighted in order of importance what are the top six things that we identified based on your site, your site alone. As, and then it's up to you to, to decide if you think that's the, that's the top six or not. Um, but yeah, the top three, I... Yeah, but your answer is really logical because what is important for another website, maybe it might not be that much important for you. And what yeah. you are doing in here is finding the specific uh, advices for the, and the problems, identifying them and helping the webmasters to fixing them. So uh, yeah, it makes... Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Actually, w one thing maybe to add, the CROI budget, um, um, in the first two presentations, um, yeah, there was a lot talked about. So um, just next to the issues, uh, when you run a CROI, there's the, the, the pie chart you've seen earlier, um, and there you have a better overview as well, if you have a huge problem with CROI budget, for example. Yeah, and also we, you had an example for Onidio, and for the profile pages, mm -hmm. maybe shortly you can brief them for us, if you mind. Um, we, we ran a crawl over on deal.com and what we've seen is that we are wasting our cr um, crawl budget on pages that have uh, no no no content no content at all mm -hmm. so what we what we decided to do is to no index and disallow um, the, the those low quality pages and at the end of uh, mm -hmm. what we what we did 
is like um, 20% increase uh, uh -huh. in organic traffic after a month. Actually, then, for Onidio, that much big website, and yeah, 20 percentage yeah. means 20 millions. Percent, yeah, it, it was like a 10 million sessions a month gain after what we did. Yeah, so it depends on, on the case, like they, they, they say it. Yeah, yeah, without using crawlers, it's no way to in identify this situation. Yeah, you, you dis these are all profile pages or just the thin pages, the software for us? Um, except the ones that are sailed to uh, brands. Okay. Like we, we know indexed all of the profile pages other than some of the special ones. Okay, okay. Because brand related stuff might have some search volumes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's why we decide to do it. Um, That's absolute and clear. But can you give one, just one example? This website, like for example on idiot.com. Uh, Mose.com. He's doing it well. Mose, yeah. Yeah, Mose.com. Yeah. Moz is a client, that's okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they are, yeah. Really? Yeah, yeah. Well, man, they have their own crawlers and... I know, but they, they, they, they need the best. It's super uh, cool. <laughs> actually, I have, I have a slide. I love introducing uh, anyone who doesn't know Deepcrawl. I love introducing <laughs> Deepcrawl with, with a, a quote from Rand Fishkin, which is, um, we love what Deepcrawl's doing and we use them. Um, it, yeah, it's pretty. It's pretty great to see Rand Fishkin of of Moz tweet yeah. uh, tweet that. Yeah, yeah. It's um, one example. I'm not gonna say Moz <laughs> as as the one example, but I don't know. I honestly, we we deal with so many agencies like like Zio that that do this um, for for their clients. They're um, <laughs> there's um, it's yeah it's it's. It, I'd say crawl budget is really important, but again, like you can you can do magical things like that, which really don't really affect crawl budget because these pages, for example, would be would be flagged as primary pages, so you'd uh, you'd still be um, you'd still be finding them um, to be efficient use of crawl budget. So sometimes it's really about digging deeper. Um, yeah, that sorry, that's my answer. We can talk about it a little afterwards if you want. Um, I'd be curious to see though what what your crawl comes out with, and maybe we can uh, discuss from there. Yeah, actually, uh, maybe I can say one example. Um, like the Guardian is um, an English, English, English publisher, yeah. So uh, they lost a lot of traffic. I don't know the percentage, but just because they had their mobile configuration not um, not configured correctly, so this is um, they didn't have the um, the um, the M page. Mm. Yeah. So like. Yeah, that is an example. So yeah, for publishing, it might be AMP, you know, to go back to, to that before. Um, yeah. yeah. But yeah, it always depends on the industry as well, as you said. Yeah. Tekrardan geldiğiniz için çok teşekkürler. Ayrıca Hissen, another special thank you for all Deep Crawl team. Thank you. Teşekkürler. Coming for four hours of flights from London.